All right, so we uh, have now created some training data, created a statistics uh, file for the image, and then we trained a support vector machines classifier. Um, so we have a classifier. We also assessed its accuracy with uh, an error matrix, which was, again, kind of flawed, but um, at least gave us kind of a ballpark idea of how we were doing. So now we would like to actually take that um, file, that, we, that model that we generated, and apply it to the image to get back a classification at all the pixel locations. Okay, so to do that, we want since we're working at the pixel level, we're going to go to Image Classifier. And then we feed it an image. So in this case, um, we'll feed it the image that we uh, trained on. Note that you could feed it a new image, um, but generally models don't tend to port to new areas very well unless the images are, and classes are very similar, right? So if we fed it another like leaf on Sentinel-2 date in the same region, it might work, but um, they, again, they don't port over very well. You can, do, you can provide a mask if you only want it to classify like a certain extent of the image. Um, here's where our model file comes in. So for that, we want to feed it our SVM model. We've got to feed it our band stats again, so Let's see here, that was our prog stats file. And label mask value, we don't need that since we have a mask. The number of classes, so that has to match the number of classes from the model. So we had five classes we were differentiating. Um, this is gonna spit back integer values, right? Our one through five class codes. So it doesn't really need to be float. So we're gonna set it to um, unsigned um, integer 8-bit. That'll give us more than enough values. And um, output image, we're gonna set that to, we'll just call it svm dot underscore class dot tiff. And there's a couple other options here. There's a confidence map and a probability map. Um, I don't believe that SVM provides those outputs, so we won't have it create those. I th um, we'll just have it do um, skip output. Um, I think if it if the algorithm doesn't produce those, it'll just say it doesn't when it runs the script, and like we'll give you like a warning or something. So all this is going to give us back is our categorical grid as an uh, an unsigned eight bit raster. Okay, so let's hit run and see if that works. And again, this can take some time depending on you know the number of bands, the cell size, the spatial extent, the complexity of the model. Generally, models are slower to train than they are to use. So, um, it, but we also have to make this prediction not once, but over for every single pixel um, in the image extent. Um, so it could, I mean, a big area could take you know hours. Um, an image this size, hopefully, going to take a couple minutes. Okay, so we're back now. We uh, This algorithm took 355 seconds to uh, process, so uh, that works five, six minutes, um, which isn't too bad considering you know, this is a 10 meter resolution image for a, f a fairly large extent. Okay, so we have our data, so let's do, our, let's do a close here and see what it looks like. All right, so it came in as a weird stretch here, um, so let's do properties. Um, symbology instead of doing a single band grab we want to do a palleted unique values and we'll do classify there and again I'll search find all your values we got back five categories which uh, hopefully makes sense since we are trained on five different categories um, and then we should be able to select colors here so if you remember one was like water so um, let's pick a blue for that uh, two was uh, low veg herbaceous, so maybe like a uh, like an orange or a yellow, maybe. Um, I'll use this like tan color here. That work. Uh, three was like bare fallow soil. Um, so maybe like an uh, we'll use like this brown color. And then four was our developed. Um, and we'll make that one like a light red, like a pink, that'll work. And then our last one, phi, was forced. So make that like a darker green. 
And we can also change the labels here. So we'll do that real quick. We water. Um, we'll call it open slash grass soil slash bear. Um, and then developed and then forced. Okay, and then we're going to apply and an OK. All right, and let's zoom out here. So again, um, this would take some looking at to see um, if we got what we expected. But we'll just zoom into a couple areas and, and have a quick look. So uh, let's see, this area, we got a lot of forest down here. And the yeah, that makes sense. Looks like it did a decent job differentiating the, the broad. Uh, I mean, there's definitely some confusion in between like the open and shrub class, or sorry, open and like bare soil class. Um, looking at like development. It's like it did a decent job with that, though there's definitely a lot of confusion between development and uh, the bare soil areas. Let's have a look at like the river. And where's it wide now? Let's see, here we go. Yeah, they generally did a pretty good job capturing the river there. Um, you can see some other ponds and uh, there are some misclassifications there, but there are some ponds it picked up pretty well. Okay, so um, so now we're at the point where we have a classification. What if what what if you've decided it wasn't good enough? Like, how would you potentially like improve it? Um, so a couple options. You could collect more training data. One thing I commonly do is I'll go into an area that was misclassified and collect training data over those areas. So effectively, you're like teaching the algorithm how to recognize its mistakes. Um, you might find that you need more input data. So maybe instead of just using like one image, you might use like a leaf on and a leaf off image and like combine them as a stack. Or maybe you could use layers that are not like image bands. So maybe like topographic slope or something or elevation or aspect. So you can, one thing nice about the machine learning algorithms is they generally can accept a wide variety of data types. Um, you might find that the classes you're trying to differentiate just aren't that differentiable and you need to like merge or combine classes or redefine your classes or something. Um, so this is generally an iterative process as opposed to just you know collecting some training data and making a map and you know delivering it. You have generally some back and forth to get a product that's uh, deemed uh, suitable. Um, it's kind of an art and a science in short. Okay, um, one thing though you may want to do um, is generalize the output a bit to get rid of like the salt and pepper effect, especially if you do a, um, especially if you're doing a pixel based classification. So let's look at doing that quickly. So I'm going to look for the sieving operation. There it is under GDAL. So let's just run a, a, a sieving operation on this. So let's open up the help real quick. Okay, so um, threshold, only raster, smaller than the size will be removed. I believe that is um, not in the map units, but in a number of cells. So we'll, yeah, let's just say if it's less than 20 cells, we'll remove it. Um, and it'll get incorporated with his neighbor. We use the used eight connection, so a diagonal counts as connected, not just at the share side. And we really don't need to set anything else. Um, it'll save, well, let's just let it save to file. So we'll do uh, um, class um, general dot tiff. And then this should run, go through and run that sieving operation and then return back a generalized version of, of the data. So um, I don't really want to go through and symbolize this, but just if we zoom in on an area here, let's like zoom into here, we should see that maybe some of these like small areas have now been removed. 
So we've got a more generalized representation. So it's a common post-processing task that we do um, after um, a classification process.